Hello everyone and welcome to another X-Plane 11 tutorial. In today's lesson we're going to do an RNAV approach into Cincinnati. So let's have a look at the flight plan. We'll be flying from Kilo Sierra Delta Foxtrot on runway 11 into Kilo Charlie Victor Gulf on runway 36 Romeo. As I mentioned we'll be doing an RNAV approach that's using our GPS so there's no need to specify an ILS frequency. And our approach course into Cincinnati will be at a 004. Our route will be direct, that's what the DCT stands for, into India India Uniform and via the Victor 5 Airway into Charlie Victor Gulf. The air rack at the time of this recording is 1908 and the distance is about 80 nautical miles. For those of you that want to follow along, the cost index will be 23. The cruising altitude 11,000 feet or flight level 110. Our time in the air 25 minutes and gate to gate time is about 53 minutes. And last but not least, the fuel we'll take on for our flight will be about 5,400 kilograms. Now I'm going to show you a couple things that are required this flight that we've never really discussed in any other video. And after flying into Cincinnati about, I'd say 10 to 15 times and always coming out high, I had to research why that was the case. And some of the tricks I'm going to show you in a few minutes will address all those things. So let's look at the approach plate for runway 36 here into Cincinnati. And look at the highlight. It says airport elevation 896 feet. So that's going to be a key indicator that we have to write down a note. And I'm going to show you what to do with that in a minute. So again, I'm showing you this information at the start of the video so that you can take screenshots, print it off in case you would like to fly along with me later. So let's jump into the cockpit and get started with today's lesson. So the first thing we'll do, we'll go over to the tablet here in the Zibo mod and we're going to select fuel weight and balance and plop in our fuel today, which will be 5.4. Now that that's done, we're going to go over here to home and we're going to select the AVI tab and go to airport. And we want to bring up the airport information for our departure um, airport right now, which is Kilo Sierra Delta Foxtrot for Louisville. And we see this weather pane here at the bottom. And again, we never really paid much attention to the weather in our previous tutorials because our flights were always ILS and seemed to work perfectly. However, again, as I stated, after 10 plus times failing at the approach for uh, Cincinnati, I had to do some research into why. And there was two reasons for that. One, I needed to know the landing, um, basically the elevation of the airport, which we learned in the, uh, a few seconds ago was 896 in Cincinnati. And we need to know the altimeter setting to set our altimeter to, which in this case is A3006. So I don't know if you have watched any of my air traffic control videos, but you'll also hear the air traffic controller say altimeter 2992. And that's the standard altimeter setting on flights above your transition altitude. So in Canada and the U.S., generally speaking, the transition altitude is 18,000 feet. So what you're supposed to do is set your altimeter to whatever this number is at the airport that you're taking off from and, again, at the airport you're arriving at. And then once you arrive at 18,000 feet, you would reset it back to the default, which is 299 or 2. These were the two pieces of information that once I had right, my landing was successful. So let me show you how to go ahead and plug in the altimeter to this non-standard setting at this aircraft, at this airport, which is 3006. So if we zoom in here, we can see the altimeter right now is set to 299 or 2, but we need to get it to 3006. So if we look up here, there's a little knob here and you can see where it says inches, radio, barrow, a HPA, and there's a little button that says standard. If you move the small wheel slightly, you'll see the numbers start to change to 3006. And you can see the altitude that we were at 
also change. So we're now 600 feet above sea level, and you can see it's now 3006. So that's the first key piece of information if you want to be able to successfully land using a um, probably any particular approach, but I'll say specifically RNAV. Let's now set our altitude to 11,000 feet. The heading is going to be 110 because we're taking off of runway 11. And let's look up and set our cabin pressure to 11,000 feet. And right below the cabin pressure is the second piece of information that uh, we've not really used in, the, in previous videos. We're setting our landing altitude. So on the landing approach chart, that was 896. So because this only goes up in increments of 50, we'll round up to 900. So first we set the altimeter to 3006, which will be different depending on the date, time you fly, and the temperature. So you'll always want to check the AVI tab. Don't just set in 3006 because that's what I say in the video. You're going to want to check what it is at the time that you fly. And the landing altitude of 900, which again, as of the Air Act um, 1908, that's what it is currently set to. Let's activate our landing lights and our taxi lights. And we're now able to go into the flight management computer and set up our route. So we'll select flight management computer, FMC. We'll move on to position init. And we'll set our reference airport as being Kilo Sierra Delta Foxtrot. We'll move over to the route section. Again, the scratch pad already has our reference airport, so we'll plug that in. And our destination is going to be Kilo Charlie Victor Gulf. And we'll be taking off from runway 11, so we'll plug that in there. And we can move on to the perfinite. So our flight level today will be FL110, and we'll plug that into to the top right button. Again, I mentioned our cost index will be 23 earlier, so we'll plug that in. Reserves of zero. And once that information's in, we can select the top button here and it'll fill in the rest of the information. And we can go ahead to the execute button. Let's select the N1 limit here for takeoff. And the first button here is the temperature outside. So again, we can specify that manually by looking up here and we can see that it's plus 14 degrees. We could type that into the box, or we can simply click the button here and Zibbo will take care of that for us. Let's move on to the takeoff screen, and we'll set our flaps to five. And automatically now our V1, VR, and V2 information appeared, so let's lock those in. And it's now important to remember that our VR is 121 come over here to our mode control panel and put in 121. Okay, so now let's go ahead to the route section here and hit next page. And let's enter in India, India uniform for the first waypoint that we're going to go to. And if you recall on my route screen on the flight information page, it said DCT. Well, that's what direct means here. So we're going direct to IIU. So the next thing we're going to do is go to Charlie Victor Gulf. And again, it says direct, but on the route information that I displayed earlier, it said we're going to go through the Victor 5 airway, so we can plug that in here. So we're going direct to IIU, and then we're going through the Victor 5 airway to Charlie Victor Gulf. We'll now activate this and hit Execute. And we'll now move on to our departure and arrivals. The departure looks correct. We're not using a SID and we're taking off from runway 11. So we'll go back to the departures and arrivals button. We'll select arrivals this time and we'll hit next page all the way down to RNAV Z36R. So again, it's RNAV approach. Z basically means it's a uh, horizontal and vertical uh, and runway 36 Romeo. So let's select that and execute it. The last thing that we need to do before we're ready to take off, go over here to the leg section and have a look for anything that looks abnormal. So the first page looks good. 
The second page has a discontinuity here that we have to take care of. So we'll select the waypoint after it and then select the one that's a problem and hit execute. Troy F is basically where we're going to start our approach and we'll hit next page and I don't see any other problems. So everything looks good. We'll put it into climb mode. On the first officer, I'm going to put it into program mode. We can now activate our flight director, armor auto throttle, and activate the flight director on the first officer screen. We'll now go ahead and have a quick look over here. Let's set the auto brake to RTO so that if there's a problem with takeoff, we'll have some brakes and set our flaps to five because that's what we specified in the mode control panel or sorry, the flight management computer earlier. So our flaps look to be extending here. Perfect. All right, so let's disarm the parking brake. And we're now ready to press the takeoff go around button and get into the air. So let's go. Let's pull back on the yoke. 10 degree pitch. Positive rate. Positive rate. Landing gear can come up. Let's up our flaps to two. 400. We can up our flaps to one. 1,000. And we can take off all our flaps. We'll now take the speed brake, put it in the off position, activate vertical navigation, lateral navigation, and command A for autopilot. So now essentially the plane's going to fly itself automatically, as you can see on the magenta line in front of us here. So let's have a look at the information that we see. So we're about 6.1 nautical miles away from India India Uniform. We'll be doing a little left-hand turn here in a minute. Our ground speed is 252. We're going about 242 in airspeed. And we can see the altimeter increasing on our way up to our top of climb, which is 11,000 feet. So everything seems to be going as planned. If we look here at the flight management computer, we're supposed to be going below 250, which we are. And we have about 10 nautical miles remaining until we get to the top of climb. So let's go ahead, take off the landing lights, take off the taxi lights, and enjoy a little bit of scenery until we hit 11,000 feet. All right, looks like we're about a thousand feet away from our top of climb. So if we zoom in here, we can see the top of climb on the screen. That's what the T slash C stands for. And we're essentially approaching our final cruising altitude of 11,000 feet. So this is a very short flight. We don't have long to go. So um, we'll have a look here at the flight management computer again and it shows that we have 49 nautical miles away to go. So let's just let the flight crew finish their chat uh, to our passengers on board, and then we'll start our next set of instructions.
everyone's safety, please make sure your personal belongings are clear of the aisle. We're pleased to offer personal device entertainment on our United Private Streamings option, sponsored by the United Plus Explorer card, on-demand movies, from the seat back in front of you. If you need to have a headset, we'll be happy to provide one once the captain lets the flight crew get up from our jump seat. Yeah, can you connect to the United Wi-Fi network? Go to unitedwifi.com. You can access united.com and the United app free of charge where you can check flight status and more. To use other apps and websites, you can purchase an internet access plan. We will be serving a variety of complimentary drinks, wines, craft beer, and other alcoholic beverages for purchase. In the United Economy, a variety of snack boxes and refreshments are available to purchase as well as freshly prepared meals from our bistro on board menu. You can find more details about the menu in the back of Hemisphere's magazine or the seatback guide. We accept most major debit and credit cards, including those with a Visa, MasterCard, Discover, or American Express logo, as well as the Mileage Plus Explorer Visa card. We now invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the service on today's flight. Let us know if there's anything we can do to make your flight more comfortable. All right, sounds like the uh, flight attendants have advised all our passengers that they can sit back, relax. Well, that's not the case for us. We have a little bit of work to do. So let's go and have a look at what we're going to be doing for landing. So we're going to go back to the tablet here in the Zibo mod. And we're going to delete the departure airport and put in our arrival airport, Kilo Charlie Victor Gulf and have a look at the weather in Cincinnati and we'll notice that it is altimeter 3008 so that is slightly different than the 3006 here that we've set in for our departure so that is going to be something that we need to set up so let's go ahead and set that up again we go over this little knob here and we put it up to 3008 um, We'll go ahead and take off the altitude down to zero. And our course will be 004. Set that both in the uh, captain and first officer screen. And let's have a quick look. So that's all we really needed to know for this particular setting. So again, like I said, the weather is updated periodically in X-Plane. Um, so these numbers will change. So if you're watching this video and the number's different uh, when you go to do it, that's probably why. So always use the up-to-date information that's inside your simulator. So we can go back to the home screen here, and I like to just keep tabs on the fuel. We got about 4.8. We started it with 5.4, so things are looking good. If we look here at the flight management computer, we're on our way to the nerve waypoint here. And we have about 13 nautical miles to go. And it looks like when we finally get to our arrival destination, we'll still have lots of fuel. About 4.8 kilograms of fuel left. We're now in cruise mode. We have 28 nautical miles until we start our descent down. So life is good. No, not much to do. Escobar. Passenger Escobar. This is in regards to a special meal. Would you please identify yourself to a flight attendant? Passenger Escobar, please. All right, interesting. So there's a whole bunch of new announcements in the Zibo mod that I've not heard before. So that's a new one for sure. So we have essentially set up the aircraft for our landing. There are some other things that we'll do when we get a little closer there. But uh, we have a little bit of relaxing time until we get to our top of descent. And I did find, again, from testing this a couple times, well, 10 plus times, that we will need to add some drag to uh, our landing in order to get the speed down. So we might launch our landing gear a little bit earlier to get some drag in there. So again, we have 20 some nautical miles before we start descending. Let's have another look at the scenery.
All right, let's check back in on the flight management computer. We're 15 nautical miles away from our top of descent, and uh, we're on our way into Cincinnati. So, so far, so good. It's been an uneventful flight, and things looking pretty good. So when we get a little closer, we'll be deploying our flaps, we'll be setting our auto brake, dropping our landing gear, uh, potentially trying to slow down the aircraft a little bit by deploying our speed brakes. Um, and again, the two pieces of information that you have to realize uh, when it comes to RNAV approaches, or perhaps all approaches, but the uh, problem was very apparent with RNAV approaches, is the altimeter and also your landing altitude. So again, if we look up here, we see the landing altitude is 900. It was 986, but we can't do uh, partial numbers on the 737-800, so we round it up to 900. And when we check the weather here on the tablet, looking at the AVI tab and the airport that we're arriving in, we can see that the altimeter was 3008. So we essentially set our altimeter here to 3008. So again, these are two things that you really need to pay attention to if you're doing an RNAV approach. Or if you want some fun, ignore them and you'll come in about 1,000 to 2,000 feet above the airport and have to make a, a much rougher landing or a go around. So um, there's pluses and minuses to do an ILS versus RNAV approach. At least now I'm teaching how to do both of them. So if we look here on our display, we can see that we're almost approaching our top of descent about five nautical miles away and you can see the decel uh, indication here so that means we're starting to slow down the aircraft a little bit because once we hit below 10,000 feet we need to go to at least 250 or 240 for speed so things are on our way so let's go ahead and make a few preparations for landing nothing major we'll do more later but uh, we can do a few basic things like setting the auto brake the auto brake has four particular modes, one, two, three, or four, or max. Ger very rarely would you actually set it to max. That's going to be for runways that are very short. For our particular case today, we'll set that to two. And when we get a little further approaching our turn, we'll probably drop the uh, landing gear because I found on my previous attempts that the speed in our turn is quite, uh, we're still going quite fast, essentially. So there we go, I hear the engines dying down, and it looks like the altitude is starting to decrease here. So we're now in descent mode. So we can see here that uh, we're descending on our way down to about 2,400 feet is the, um, the minimums uh, for the uh, approach that we're flying right now. So we're on our way down. So let's go ahead and have a little fun while we're waiting. We can tell all our passengers that uh, we're on the way down, letting them know we're descending. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we are descending. Uh, seatbelt sign is on. If you happen to be up and about, please return your seat. Keep your seatbelt fastened for the dangerous flight. On behalf of the flight crew, we appreciate you being with us today. Wish you a very safe and pleasant journey to your final destination. Hope to see you back here with us soon. Thank you. Okay, we'll be flying into runway 36 Romeo, so we can go ahead and set our heading through 000. And uh, our speed is good, so uh, maybe we're going to get off easier in this flight. Normally I, I get into a s where uh, a drag is required, so uh, we'll see soon enough. Probably once the turn starts, we're going to start speeding above the 240 that we're allowed, uh, or 250 that we're allowed below 10,000 feet. So we might actually have to, uh, there we go. So well, I'm going to activate the speed brakes here. So for those of you that are wondering, it's this knob right here. So again, I'll turn them off. Now we'll turn them back on. And this is what they look like outside when the speed brakes are activated. And this is what they look like when the speed brakes are off. So the speed brakes add a little bit of drag to uh, your flight so that this way you can stay at the speed that you need to be at for our turn. So things are looking good. 
So once we finish the turn, I'll, I'll uh, take off the speed brakes and we'll only use them once we land. But uh, I just want to keep things nice and slow for our uh, descent down to runway 36 Romeo, which as you can see on the screen, once we finish the turn, we have a slow, maybe five to six nautical mile trip. And then we'll be making a left-hand turn and onto the runway we go. So even with the speed brakes deployed, you can still see I'm, I'm you know, a little bit over the 250 mark. So what I'll do is I'll drop the landing gear. That should create a little bit more drag. There we go. We're back going down again to uh, the 240. So uh, we can take off the speed brakes now. Let's go to the flight management computer. And you can see it was letting us know that there was some drag required as well, so we'll clear that. And we need to tell the flight management computer what our approach speed and flaps will be. So we'll select the knit ref, and you can see we have 15, 30, and 40, so you can choose what's right for you. For me, I'm going to go 30 and a speed of 131. And if I select that, see how it now became bigger than the other two? But it's still not active because the flap slash speed down here is still empty. You actually have to select it twice. So that's a, a common mistake that most people made. I made it many times myself. You have select it once and then select it again. And then now you have flaps 30 and a speed of 131. So basically what that's saying is that when we get to our approach speed, we're going to set our flaps to 30 and the mode control panel will auto throttle our speed to 131 knots set it to the program mode let's go ahead and acti activate the terrain indicator here so you can see on the screen we now have terrain or ter what that's going to do is give me some indications later on the screen if i'm going to hit anything or my altitude's too low i'll start to see some green on the screen that shows me uh what's going on it's always the best practice there to either have the pilot or the first officer with the terrain uh, map on. So let's go ahead and set our flaps to five. Looks like we're making our turn here. So we can see here the speed's decreasing to the speed required for flaps 5. So once it reaches it, we'll uh, go ahead and lower our flaps some more. Perfect. So let's go flaps 15. See, we're at flaps 15. And we're approaching the speed for flaps 15. Once the speed normalizes here, we'll go ahead and move the flaps to 30 for our approach speed here. Okay, we're now lining up with the uh, final approach to the uh, runway, runway 36 Romeo. So let's go ahead and drop the flaps to 30. So as we drop the flaps, the speed increases on the engine to compensate. Uh, sorry, the engines roar a little louder, but essentially it lets us do a slower speed, but still move through the airway. If you're doing a real life flight, you would be wanting to be flying into the winds. So you'd also go into the X-plane configuration and set your winds. So if you want to do that for fun, we can do that. We go into the flight configuration screen here and we go to weather and we can add a wind layer. Put that down to the bottom and we're flying into runway 36 so zero was fine and we'll put a speed of let's say 10 knots so this way we're flying into a headwind so in theory we would go even slower than our, our current altitude we'll select done and apply 
there we go. So now we have a headwind that we're flying into, which is uh, the recommended way. So normally when you call into the air traffic control tower and you ask for which runway can you fly into, um, it's whatever runways are active that has the wind um, as a headwind. So if you still want to use the flight information that I provided at the start of the video, which is we took off from runway 11 and we landed at runway 36, you might want to put a headwind there on runway 36 if it's not uh, configured for that already. Making a slight right hand turn, approaching 4,500 feet. And we can see here what looks to be an ILS indication here, but it's not. So you can see here we have our diamond solid here and our diamond solid there. So this is our glide slope and below is our localizer but we have yet to actually tune into an ILS frequency. So what happens when you do an RNAV approach, it superimposes what looks to be a glide slope and localizer onto your display, but it's not actually using the radios. It's actually using your GPS navigation and your altimeter here. So that's why the altimeter and your landing altitude uh, along with the GPS are all important in order to do an RNAV approach, which we're doing right now. So I see the runway in sight. I'm hoping that this isn't one of the 10 plus um, sessions where um, we flew in high. Everything is done properly. Our altimeter was set to 3008 because that's what the weather indicated or ATIS said that we needed to be at. Our landing altitude was set to 896 or 900 because we had to round up. 2500. And we can now see that even though the altimeter shows 3,400 feet below there is what the actual altimeter is right now with the adjustment. So we're at 22, um, approaching 21. So you can keep an eye on that. And our speed is what we set into the MCP, which was about 130. So um, plus or minus a bit. Our flaps are 30. Our auto brake has been set to 2. We should be all set until we get to about 100 feet, 200 feet, then we'll disarm the auto throttle, we'll disarm the autopilot, we'll get a couple warnings here flashing with some sirens when that happens, we'll click them so the sirens go away. Then we'll turn the throttle to idle and we'll push forward the speed brake and we'll push forward the uh, reverse thrusters, which I'll show you what they look like once we land. Let's have a look at a little bit of scenery while we approach our landing. Actually, first we need to activate our landing lights and taxi lights. Almost approaching a thousand feet. One thousand. Thousand feet stabilized, Mr. Perch altitude set. Thank you, first officer. So again you'll see the altimeter there. It's about eighteen sixty, but in the center there where the localizer is, we can see what the true altimeter is. It's seven hundred feet right now. Looking at the Pappy lights way out in the front, we got two red and two white, so things are looking good. Or at least we, we had them two red and two white. So we have not pressed the approach button. Several YouTube videos say that like an ILS approach, you should press the approach button, but that is not the case. You stay in vertical navigation and lateral navigation the entire time. You only press the approach button if you're doing an ILS approach, not an RNAV approach. 300. So let's turn off the auto throttle. The, uh, flight directors and the autopilot. 
And I'm doing a little manual thing there. For some reason, we came in a little bit too low, in my opinion, here. So um, I just took over the last 200 feet here. So it could be the scenery and next plane. 40. 30. Throttle. 20, set to idle. 10. All right, now that we landed, let's go ahead and set our speed brake and reverse thrusters on. I'll show you what that looks like here. You can see there. And our ground speed is almost at 20, so we'll go ahead and take off the reverse thrust, speed brakes, and remove the auto brake. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was a flight from Louisville to Cincinnati. Um, we did an RNAV approach. And as I mentioned, I probably did this approach 10 to 15 times. The last couple times I've got it set up, so uh, I thought it was perfect. But uh, as we've seen, there's still the odd little issue here and there uh, because we came in slightly low. So again, um, I don't know if that's the uh, approach, uh, the nav data inside X-Plane. I don't know if that's Zibo mod. I'm not sure if that's because the weather changed again since when we looked at it when we first took off. But these are all things that you would need to look into um, if you want to figure out or troubleshoot what's going on. But we did come pretty close. It was at the uh, level where you normally would disengage the autopilot anyway and then fly in visually. So generally with ILS, uh, there's a minimum uh, category that you would like to say 200 feet and then you would disengage the autopilot and from that point forward, you would fly it yourself. So um, it did bring us into that particular altitude. So uh, I hope you all enjoyed this X-Plane 11 tutorial doing an RNAV approach, which is something we haven't done and showing you a couple features that we've never shown you in previous videos such as setting the altimeter and the landing altitude. So I would appreciate any comments that you have. Maybe you found something of why I'm running into this issue or why it came in too low this particular time. Maybe there's additional videos that you're looking for some help for. Please subscribe and share with me your comments. So thanks again for watching and have a great day.